In this lesson, we introduce the concept of AC steady state analysis for circuits that contain inductors, capacitors, or resistors. When we analyze circuits with steady state AC currents and voltages, we will often encounter two other passive elements in addition to the resistor. The first we'll consider is the inductor, which has a circuit symbol that looks like this, and has an associated inductance that is measured in units called Henry's. Whereas a resistor has an ideal voltage current relationship that is V equal IR, the voltage current relationship for an inductor depends on the way that the current through the inductor changes with time. If, for instance, V12 is the voltage drop from node 1 to node 2, and I12 is the current flowing in the direction from node 1 toward node 2, then the voltage across the inductor is equal to the inductance times the derivative of the current through the inductor with respect to time. Then for the special case when the current through the inductor is sinusoidal with frequency f and the corresponding phasor representation I12 with amplitude a and phase phi, the derivative will be equal to negative 2 pi f times a times the sine of 2 pi f t plus phi, which can be converted to a cosine by removing the minus sign and adding a phase shift of pi over 2 or 90 degrees. The corresponding phasor then will have an amplitude equal to 2 pi f a and a phase equal to phi plus pi over 2, which we can write as 2 pi f e to the j pi over 2 times the original phasor for the current. And if we note that e to the j pi over 2 is equal to j, that is the square root of minus 1, then the result is j times 2 times pi times f times the original phasor for the current. Now when we scale the derivative of the current by the inductance, we get a new result that the phasor representation for the voltage across the inductor is equal to j times 2 times pi times f times l times the original phasor for the current. Now the term, the one that multiplies the current, is called the impedance for the inductor. And we can write the phasor form for the voltage current relationship as V equal Z times I, which you might think of as a complex valued Ohm's law for inductors. Now another element we need to consider is called a capacitor, and it is represented with two parallel lines like this, and it is characterized by its capacitance, which has units of farads. Much like the inductor, the voltage-current relationship for a capacitor depends on the way the voltage and current fluctuate in time. Specifically, the current through the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time. Just like we need to do with resistors and inductors, it's important to pay attention to the re reference direction for the current and the polarity for the voltage drop. When the current direction is from the negative to the positive of the voltage, then we'll need to include a minus sign in this definition. Now, much like we did for the inductor, we can consider the situation when the voltage across the capacitor is a sinusoid with frequency f, which has an associated phasor representation with the amplitude a and the phase phi. The derivative of this voltage is negative 2 pi f a times the sine of 2 pi f t plus phi. And following the same sort of analysis that we used for the inductor, we can see that the phasor representation of the derivative is j times 2 times pi times f times the phasor representation for the original voltage. Then if we include the capacitance, we get the relationship that the phasor current is equal to j times 2 times pi times f times the capacitance, all times the original phasor voltage. Or, equivalently, the voltage is the reciprocal of j times 2 times pi times f times the capacitance, all times the current, which we can also write with the square root of minus 1, 
j in the numerator if we include a factor of minus 1. That is, 1 over j is equal to negative j. Now, because this is a multiplicative factor that relates the current to the voltage, we call this term the impedance. And we write the voltage as the product of the current times the impedance. And again, we can think of this as the complex-valued Ohm's law for capacitors. Now, the three passive circuit elements that we consider in AC analysis are the inductor, the capacitor, and the resistor. For each of those, we associate the impedances shown here. Now, because the voltage-current relationship for a resistor does not depend on how the voltage or current fluctuates with time, the impedance for a resistor is simply its resistance. But because the way the inductor and capacitor depend on time fluctuations, their impedances depend on the frequency of the AC currents and voltages. As an example, let's suppose we have a simple circuit with an AC current source and an inductor. If we replace the current source by its phasor representation, its amplitude and its phase, and make note of the frequency, we could redraw the circuit like this. Then, if we use the frequency to specify the impedance for the inductor, we could redraw the circuit like this, where the source is specified by the phasor, I sub s, and the inductor is specified by its impedance, z sub l. Now at this point, we can analyze this circuit in exactly the same way we did for DC circuits with sources and resistors, except now the source and inductor are specified by complex values instead of real values. If, for example, we want to determine the voltage drop from node 0 to node 1, we could first note that this is the same as the voltage drop from node 3 to node 1, and then because the reference direction for the current source enters the voltage at its negative side, the relationship between the voltage and the current would be negative IS times the impedance ZL. Suppose, for example, that the current is 2 amps with a phase angle of 140 degrees and a frequency of 60 hertz. And the inductance is 40 millihenries, which corresponds to an impedance of j times 24 over 5 times pi. This results in a voltage drop equal to negative Is times z, or 48 over 5 times pi volts with an angle of 50 degrees. Now as a function of time then, the voltage would be a sinusoid with an amplitude of 48 over 5 times pi, a frequency of 60 hertz, and a phase of 50 degrees, or 5 over 18 times pi radians, if we prefer radians to degrees.